Hello and welcome to Library Visited. In the previous tutorial, uh, tutorial number four, we have seen OSGI. Uh, we have looked into what exactly is OSGI, what are the benefits of using OSGI, and then uh, we looked into the OSGI bundle lifecycle, like <clears throat> what all states are there for an OSGI bundle. For example, it can be an installed state, it can be a started state, it can be an activated. So there are a lot of states which we have looked into the states of OSGI bundle. Then we looked uh, into the bundle, what exactly are the files that are present in an OSGI bundle. Uh, and like more, most importantly, we looked into the manifest file that what is the purpose of having manifest file. In this tutorial, tutorial number five, we are going to look into application development and we are going to deep dive into like implementation of OSGI. So to do that, we are going to start with Service Builder. Service Builder is a component of Liferay which allows you to write your database interaction layer uh, with Liferay providing you an automated feature where you just provide your outline of the table and uh, what exactly you want in that table and what all things you want to do with that table. And uh, the code would be written by Liferay. So as a part of this, we are going to look into what is Service Builder. We will create a project with Service Builder. Uh, we will look into what all different kind of projects are created with Service Builder. And then we are going to look into the files associated, associated with the Service Builder. Uh, further, we are going to create an application uh, where we would be having an employee and employee details would be saved in an employee table. But first, let's go ahead and create a new Service Builder project. So to start with, uh, what we are going to have is we are going to have uh, our library workspace set it up. Uh, we have uh, our Eclipse started and we have our Tomcat server up and running. Now uh, to start with the service builder, what we'll go, we'll go over here, new library module project. And in the library module project, we are going to select. We are going to give the name and in that name, uh, let's write employee. Employee is going to be my project name because uh, we are creating service for that. Over here, build type is Gradle because we are working on Gradle. Then project template name we are going to use is service builder. So I'll do just next. And in the package name, I'm going to give com.lr.revisited. Lifefree.revisited.employee. Let's just keep it like this. Yeah, let's just keep it like this and then say finish. So now uh, what you will see is Liferay has created a folder over here inside module, which is known as employee. And it is going to have two projects. One is going to be employee API and another would be employee service. So in the API section, we would be having all of the APIs model uh, and things like that and the employee service is going to be the implementation class where all of the implementation of the uh, services or POJOs or uh, remote services exposed by service dot uh, XML are going to reside over there. Now there is one special file which has been created in employee service which is known as service dot XML. This is the file that we have talked about earlier which is going to contain the list of uh, the tables that we want to create and it is going to contain what we need to define for this particular table. So let's go to overview and in the overview you will see like uh, there is uh, the name of the entity which is foo which is going to be our class name foo. Now in this column name we have a lot of things. Let's just remove everything and start with creating our own. So I'll just uh, remove all of these things because you can define a lot of things. I'll just remove finder also. We'll talk about this later and I'll remove reference entity also. So in this uh, particular uh, table, as of now, let's just start with renaming it to employee and we need a local service and we need a remote service. So both of these means like when you initiate uh, tick mark on this remote all of the API related services call uh, which you want to uh, Call using rest API would be available if you click on this remote 
and local service is going to be available for the people to use in the inside the code so let's click on employee you will see over here like uh, what is going to be the table name and persistence class these things we are going to talk about later session factory and transaction manager over here uh, we are going to define whether we need cash or not in this particular service and we need json enabled or not else it would be xml trash enabled is something which uh, life Free provides you uh, like uh, you to enable if you want to enable trash there is a functionality in life Free you can implement in your custom entities also now if we talk about the columns let's just start with renaming them so let's just write employee id then group id company id user id username created name modified date these are the things which are uh, by default uh, audit tables if you want to create some sort of audits these are like create a starting point so i'll just uh, remove this group id we don't need that company id we don't need that if you are going to implement site level structure or company level structure in your project you can utilize them which we are going to see after some time so let's have a look in our in our ppt that we have talked about for employee details so the first one is name then we have phone number we have address so i'll just go ahead and start with writing those over here so i'll just add a column it would be name and the type would be string the next one that we are going to add is address which is again is going to be a type of a string now we can add a new column which is going to be phone number or yeah let's call it phone number which is going to be a string next one is going to be we have done is salary then email address so let's start with salary it's going to be type long then we are going to add email address and it's going to be of type string next what we have is date of joining and date of leaving so we'll just write date of joining doj and we will consider this as a type date and now we will have date of leaving and again it would be type of date so if you want to look into what all attributes are supported by this type then you can look over here it can be big decimal blob boolean then uh, map short string integer these all things are supported by life service builder so uh, once we have all of this done we have defined our table uh, we have defined that what exactly is employee table going to contain and over here in the service builder namespace is going to be employee or we can call it lr because we are working with life free revisited now what is going to happen is as soon as we are going to run this uh, service builder it is going to write a lot of files all those files are going to uh, a beep boilerplate code uh, which is going to be defined over here so you see in the xml we have our audit fields which is user id username create date modified date and then uh, we have the primary key which is employee id then we have column name phone number address all those kind of columns are stated out over here so the next step to uh, do thing over here is that we will go into this modules we will go into employee folder and we will click on build services so as soon as we are going to uh, click on build services you'll see the logs it is going to show a lot of things over here that this is the working directory and the version of the Gradle that we are using then the Java version and post that it's going to start building the service so if you see in the build services task what it has done is it has created a lot of classes in multiple folders so if you see like uh, in employee api it has created util and persistence then uh, 
other thing that it has it has created is model and employee and uh, in the service it has implemented model IMPL so all of the classes which are related to IMPL are going to go into our service module and all of those uh, which are interfaces are going to go to our API folder so uh, let's go and uh, just do a quick refresh over here so you will see like uh, let me change the structure of this and project presentation let's make it flat so that everything comes out now if we go inside this we will see that uh, there are these classes which has been generated by Liferay and apart from this in this IMPL we will be having a lot of IMPL classes which are related to employee service now in the resource section we will see like it has created a hibernate HBM file for this particular module uh, you will see like it has uh, created a class uh, a class with employee name and it has IMPL class and it is defining a bin over here in the same way uh, in the hints.xml uh, it is going to define like uh, these are the type of this particular table we can uh, reduce or add the where care things uh, like uh, if you want to by default a where care or a string is of 75 characters uh, but we are but if we want to increase that size we can do that via uh, via some changes over here now uh, post that if you see like it has created some indexes uh, these indexes are on uh, multiple columns uh, which are defined in service.xml once you write the finders then we have sequences if there would be any then in the table.sql you will see like there is a sql for complete table uh, which we have created as a part of xml so over here it is defining that uh, the table name is going to be lr underscore employee which we have defined in our service.xml so uh, this is uh, pretty basic about how uh, life Ray service builder creates and what all things it's gonna create in the next tutorial we are going to actually deploy this uh, these two folders into life Ray and see what exactly happens once we have deployed these thanks a lot for tuning in bye bye